Fu Sheng Wu Liang Tianzun, my dear friends, welcome to today's webinar. The webinar about Taoist diet and fasting, and we are starting with a presentation. And I'm going to lead you through this presentation, and at the end we also have a Q&A round for your questions. Uh, if you have a question in between, uh, you could just write it in the comments and we're gonna uh, talk about it at the end. So let's start with uh, a short introduction about myself. I'm Daoist Liu. Most of the people know me by the Daoist name Liu Changyong. I'm the 24th generation inheritor of the Chunzhen Long Pai and the 40th generation Chunzhen Gao Gong High Priest. 31st generation Qing Wei Pai is a Zheng Yi lineage, is a Zheng Yi San Shan Di Xue Shou Pai. Uh, 31st and the uh, Taoist name there is uh, uh, Liu. Dang Xing, Dang Zibu is the 31st generation name. And I'm also uh, inheritor of the Wu Dang Xiong Pai in the 16th generation. I'm the president of the German Dao Association and the chairman of the German Wu Dang Dao Association. Headmaster of the Yu Zheng Guan, Xi Ji Da Dao Guan, and the Dao's College. And we are going to look at some of the photos of the past here is 2014, 15, I think, in the Da Dao Guan. Uh, doing ceremonies with some of my brothers, and this is a more recent photo in the uh, Wu Sheng Miao, also in Wuhan. Here is also photos of the Da Da Guan. This is in Nan Wudang. Here is also a ceremony in Nan Wudang, and where I have uh, students and classes as a, a teacher in the Nan Wudang Temple. It's called Wu Sheng uh, Wu Sheng Gong. Uh, Wu Sheng Gong. So the Yu Zheng Guan and Daoist College in Germany, we um, have classes for international students. We also have students come from Europe, come from all around the world, join us. And here's a photo of my disciples and here's a little shot of a ceremony we just did recently. And also the daily ceremonies and uh, rituals we do here. And also, students uh, can learn about tea. We have tea field, uh, growing tea, and also making our own tea, Wudang green tea, and it's also very interesting. So today we are going to talk and learn about Taoist diets. So the Taoist diet has many, many different types and many different variations, depending on what uh, actually method one practitioner is doing or practicing the way of cultivation depending on the region, depending on the lineage, depending on personal preferences and uh, just a general understanding for Taoist diet we want to talk about today. The fundamental, before we start talking about the food and the diets, we need to understand the most fundamental uh, principles. That's the principle of yin and yang. Most of you already know the yin yang is a taiji, uh, the white and the black. But let's review the three principles of the yin yang. The first principle is yin and yang are opposite to each other. Uh, it's very important to know there is a high and a low of energy, there is day and night and so on. So they are the opposite. Then the second principle is actually just quite the opposite of the first one is means they are equal to each other. So now they are not only opposite, they are not different, but they are equal. So equally important and both sides of a metal. And the third principle of yin yang is they are interchangeable. And here you can see the yin also has a little yang in it and the yang has a little yin in it. So we already pointed out there is a few things we need to understand for the yin yang. First and foremost principle is we do not 
identify things, but we try to describe them. Yin is dark, female, water, cold, heavy, and supple. While yang is bright, male, fire, heat, light, and forceful. Everything existing can be described with just these two principles. So whatever we want to describe in this universe, everything existing can be described with just these two, yin and yang. So also all type of food, all type of conditions, all type of disease, emotions, colors, everything could be just described with these two principles. There's another very important principle for us to understand diets is the principle of the wuxing, the five elements. So let's talk about the fundamentals of the five elements. Most of you already heard about the five elements and what uh, they are. So we're just gonna repeat very quick. We have the wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. So mu, huo, tu, jin, and shui. And these five elements, they are not a fixed state, but they are able to transform. That's why there's a creation circle the creation circle called Sheng. Yeah? Wood create fire. Uh, wood, when you burn it, it is able to create the fire. Fire creates earth, so after you burn the wood, it stays the ashes, and then the ashes can become to earth. Uh, so Huo Sheng, Huo Sheng Tu. The earth create the metal, so there is minerals, uh, growing in the earth and the metal creates water. Um, so if when you uh, put a piece of metal outside overnight, the next day there's water on there, on the water drops on the metal. So the metal attracts the water and the water gives birth to or creates the wood. These are no fixed things like, oh, this is wood, this must be the tree. No, this is a characteristic. This is something we can also use to identify things, their characteristics. And now we also have a control circle. The control circle is called ke. The wood control the earth. Yeah? We understand that the tree, for example, the roots, they are rooted in the earth, take the minerals out of the earth. So the wood controls the earth. Earth controls water. And if you pour water on earth, the earth absorbs the water. Water controls fire. You can extinguish the fire with the water. Fire controls metal. Now fire melting the metal. And metal is controlling the wood. So Metal, an axe, an axe can cut wood. So we have both circles, the control circle and the creation circle. Five elements are not a fixed thing, but a quality which is ever transforming. We call it wuxing, five transformations. Everything has one or more qualities. So everything, for example, food items, senses, body parts, organs, uh, emotions. And they're all divided in these categories. The qualities can change slowly or quickly. So these qualities, they are ever transforming. Here's another list of the five elements wishing with directions. So we know that not only the five elements in the circle and control and creation circle. But we also have the cardinal directions where earth is the center. So we have uh, fire in the south, 
And when we look at the Yi Jing, or this is fundamental of the Yi Jing, we always have south on the top, so fire on the top, and water as uh, the opposite on the north, uh, earth in the middle. Then the west has the metal, and the east is wood. Mu Ho Tu Jin Shu Dei. Dong Nan. Dong Xi Dei. As the directions. Five elements and the connection to the nature and body. We just already learned that the five elements, they have a control and a creation circle. But now let's see a few more details. What are they connected to? And they are connected to the inside, the macrocosmic, and the outside, the macrocosmic. So we have a connection between the five elements with ourself, inside ourself, and also on the outside, the universe, everything inside the universe. Five elements also related or connected to the body parts, organs and meridians, senses, emotions, tastes, seasons and natural phenomena, and so on and so on. So let's repeat. Wood, uh, here color green. Uh, the color is also very significant in this. If you uh, look at food items later on, you can also divide them into these five element categories. But we'll come to this in a moment. First, let's look at the uh, five elements Wu Xing. Wood is green, fire is red, earth is yellow, metal is gray or white sometimes, water is blue or dark. Now we say dark as the color of water. Then here, the big fat printed names or words here are emotions. So wood is connected to the emotion of anger. Fire is connected to joy. Earth is connected to worry, worries or thinking. Metal is connected to grief. Water is connected to fear. And don't forget this circle, they are creating each other and also controlling each other. So everything within these elements, within the categories, they can always be controlled or created by another part of the system. Here we have also the organs. Yeah? For the wood, we have liver and gallbladder. For the fire, we have heart and small intestines, pericardium and sandhya. Sandhyao is a part of the intestines as well. Earth is spleen and stomach. Metal is large intestine and the lung. And water is represent the kidney and the bladder. It's actually very simple when you understand the principles. Then, of course, we have seasons, spring, summer, late summer or midsummer. Uh, we have autumn and we have the winter. Actually, all of these uh, categories, they have the very specific characteristic of this ele uh, specific element. Yeah? So wood, yeah, wood all include the characteristics of wood, are uh, all parts are listed here. Now, of course, the list could go on and on, but as a general introduction, we can look at it this way. If we understand that these uh, elements, they control and also create each other, we can also learn and understand how the different energies could affect each other. So later on, we're talking about um, taboos or things, item, food items we don't eat. They have all a specific reason. They all rooted or originate in the principle of the five elements. So later on, if you don't understand, uh, you go back and have a look at this exact graphic here. So here's another list where we can see a few more items here, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. And here are the organs. We always have the yin and the yang organ, uh, liver, heart, spleen, lung, and kidney are the yin organs. And yang organs, because they are hollow, uh, 
there are gallbladder, intestine, small intestine, stomach, large intestine, and the bladder. Tastes for wood is sour, fire is bitter, earth is sweet, metal is pungent, and water is salty. And then we have tissue, tendon, blood vessel, muscle, skin, and bone. Seasons we already mentioned, and then the emotions we also talked about. Very important for our webinar today is the understanding of the different tastes and also the colors, because we want to understand the quality of food and the energy inside the food. So we can benefit from our diet. And this is the main reason why we need to understand the five elements as well. So when we are talking about Dao's diet, we often see medicine or herbal medicine or mixtures of different type of plants or you know, organic materials. And then also have this idea of Taoists also go and find the food in the mountains or in nature. And of course, if we live in a temple and have our day daily tasks to do, we also eat inside the temple and there is always like a big kitchen. I've, um, I live for many years in temple, so I know there's always food, uh, different type of food and sometimes uh, you go and uh, make uh, the best out of this. Some places they have uh, no many people, so they probably grow their own food. Some bigger temples, they of course get supplies, but very small places, they of course go find food in the wild as well, you know, or they grow their own foods. And when we are talking about diet, yeah, it's a general term. Diet, a Taoist, depending on what school and what tradition and what practices they are following, depending on uh, the traditions they are initiated in, there is different standards for diets. Some schools, they are allowed to eat meat. Some schools, they don't want uh, people to eat meat, but you know, it depends also on uh, what we practice. For example, my personal experience is to eat meat is also good for getting strong and healthy after you get sickness. And also for worshipping, you should do some fasting. Fasting, what does it mean? And in this seminar or webinar, we are talking more about the details of what is the fasting or what is jai. Jai is a very general term for fasting. But when we are looking at the Taoists in the temple, they always practice or do the rituals and ceremonies and offerings. So when we are, uh, keep in mind that the ceremonies, you know, people need to be clear and you know, purify themselves. Then the fasting is a day-to-day -day practice for most of the Taoists who are involved in these type of practices. Some are not so much involved in the ceremonies, but then they also do some uh, certain diets for their own cultivation. So we have two things. We have the ceremony where we do the outside or external cultivation, where we need to be pure and clean for doing the ritual the correct way, the worshiping or ceremonies. And then we have internal cultivation, the negung or nedangung, internal elixir where we purify ourselves and through the diet clean ourselves inside. So we need to understand that there is different type of food and again we are looking at the five elements here with the colors. So actually Water is dark food or black food. Yeah, we can see all the different type of food with the black or dark color. They are concerned or they are connected with the element. Water, green food is connected with the wood. Red food is connected with fire. Yellow food connected with the earth. 
and white food is connected to metal. Yeah, keep in mind that these foods or these elements, they are transferable or transforming. And when we are looking at this, this list or this picture here, you see different type of food. And we have like a category here, cold, cool, and normal, warm, and hot. So we have uh, different food items. They also have a different, or we uh, could uh, categorize them as colder food or cold food and hot food. The uh, category here is about the energy, what type of energy is inside this food? Is it cold? Is it colder energy or is it hot energy? And this has nothing to do with the actual temperature. So when we are talking about these cold or this category called hot, we need to understand that there is in the Chinese medicine or Taoist medicine, we have diseases, they are categorized into cold, wet, dry, hot, and so on. And these categories are important to know how to solve the issue or how to treat the disease. We need to understand that the food is actually medicine. We eat the correct food, the body can benefit from it. We fight the disease from the inside. So, for example, cold foods here you can see is melon, apples, most of the fruits, yogurt, mussels, celery, lettuce, salt, and barley. And these are just a few of the items. You can look it up and look at um, what you find about cold foods. Then cool foods are like eggplant, tomatoes, lemons, crab, spinach, Chinese tea. Why Chinese tea? Here, this is obviously uh, they meant green tea because the green tea is actually cooling. And if we are thinking of some mint tea, Moroccan mint, the mint is actually uh, the mint tea is a hot drink, hot drink. So it keeps you warm in the cold days. But then the quality of the mint of the herbs is actually cooling. So when we are drinking the mint tea or green tea in the summer, it actually cools us from the inside out because the quality is cooling. Bread, milk, cheese, and soft cheese, cottage cheese, and so on, they all uh, represent this. If we are going through all these items, we can see also there is a kind of a different in the color and also kind of different in the shapes. Let's look at the ginger. Ginger, for example, is a root, yeah? a root, and this root has a lot of heat. If we are feeling cold, if we feel um, yeah, like uh, the nose is blocked, we can also eat some ginger or make uh, some slice and put in hot water. And what we also could do is like make a, a ginger soup or ginger like a, a porridge. Uh, so put some ginger inside and then also eat this. Some of the items uh, you probably already eat. Um, yeah, there's, for example, the um, brown rice. Um, we sit here as a normal food. Some uh, items like pumpkin and this also because the color, they have a warm energy to it, same like carrots. It's mostly also related to the color. That's why we learn the five elements first, and then we understand the cold to hot categories. Um, here we have another uh, item here like mustard. Mustard is kind of spicy, so it develops a lot of heat inside our body. Uh, same like peaches. So we have a saying is called shanghua. Shanghua in Chinese means rising the heat. So some people, they eat items yeah, overly. Um, the items they eat 
have this hot energy attached to it, so they are getting heat or oh, rise the heat, and this means rising the heat chamfer. Some people they get red ears, some people get uh, some red face, or, you know, different uh, different type of heat. So when we are when we know that some of the food items we eat have a specific result, we can also control the balance. At the end, we always want to have a balanced and harmonious and balanced diet. The balance of yin yang is very important for our health. So we don't want to have overly heat or overly coldness in our diet. So we need to have always a good mixture of all the type of food. Some uh, those diets, they recommend to use mushrooms and potatoes, like mushrooms you can find everywhere. And they also contain a lot of water. And the, the potatoes are all, all type of root, uh, root foods, like uh, root potatoes and uh, some other food items. They are similar and they, have, they uh, build a good uh, base for uh, Taoist diet. Uh, later on, we also talk about Biku, which is the abstinence of grains, and we are looking at this in a moment. So let's go to the next picture we have here, or something with a, a very good graphic, but it's a general understanding that we categorize different food items also according to their color. Now we have the roots and the mushrooms here on this together in this category is category water. Then we have all the lettuce and green uh, food items. We have here the category of wood, uh, all the five elements. We have all the red tomato fruits, you know, everything what rises the fire energy inside, we connect it to the fire element. Then also all the yellow and orange uh, colored vegetables or food items uh, here to the element earth. Then for element metal, we also have all type of white, whitish, white looking food items. So the next part of our webinar or presentation is the fundamentals of the Bigu. Bigu is a specific diet, a healthy diet, nutrient practice are the foundation of a long life. Ancient Taoists searched for a way to prolonging the lifespan to extend for immortality. Simply put, different practices allow us to build a long lasting vessel, and the vessel is our body, for the spirit to reside in while we are cultivating the Tao. Bigu translated, or the deep meaning of it, is refusing grains. And this has a historical background. The avoidance of grain shows the Taoist rejection of normal social practices. So Taoists, even in ancient times, they try to break with the social society or social normal practices. Yeah? It is a return to a time in the dawn of mankind. So when we just start uh, collecting food, you know, there's no crops, when there were no crops and everybody's just very used primit primitive tools, hunting or you know, just find the food. Taoist Bigu practitioners found a way to end the agricultural base that the Chinese society relied on. So a Taoist who doesn't eat grains is not attached or not, doesn't need to grow crops, doesn't need to eat all type of food because they get the energy some elsewhere. The cutting off of grains as the staple food for the farmers also are rejection of their sedentary, sedentary lifestyle 
and the peasant condition as such. So a person who is always eating grains is somewhat uh, rely on the state to provide this kind of food. The rejection should not be based solely on the peasant plight, but should be interpreted in a much deeper way. So a person who can refuse or refuse to eat grains, meaning rice, grain, uh, rice, ray, wheat, uh, all different types uh, of grains, uh, this uh, means we are also like cutting off this, uh, the attachment to a certain provider. Yeah, so we are more free, xiaoyao, like the Zhuangzi would say, xiaoyao. Since the Neolithic age, Neolithic age, agriculture has been the cause of radical break in the way of life for almost all prehistory. So whenever there is a, a time when there's not enough food, no enough grains, there's a lot of people dying, maybe there's a lot of war, when there's war, there's a lot of need for these type of foods. So the grains or eating grains also means that we are attached to this. We need to also uh, live with the history that all this also brought a lot of pain and suffering. Agriculture, has also been the main cause of imbalances in human civilizations over the past 10,000 years. So like I said, every war needs supplies. What is the most important things is food, food supplies for the soldiers, food supplies for the uh, citizens. So there's a lot of who has the grain, who has all the uh, grain uh, has the most power. That's why it's uh, important knowledge. The systematic destruction of the natural environment, overpopulation, capitalization, and other evils that led to sedentary lifestyles. Now we come to the next part, Changsheng. Changsheng means long life. We want to have a long life or create a vessel who can live for a long time, a healthy vessel, because we want to cultivate Tao for a long time. Grain abstinence was a prerequisite for the practice of Taoist Yang Xing, nourishing the inner nature. Nurturing the life principle consists in suppressing the cause of death and creating the immortal body to replace the mortal. So looking at the So we want to create an immortal body by healthy diet and nurturing the life. Yang Sheng or Yang Xing, meaning we are doing good and healthy activities, eating healthy, have a healthy emotional and mental stability. The causes of death are mainly because the chi of the grain and the chi of bloody food. This obviously means the chi of the grain is not very healthy for us, for our original body. And of course, the chi of bloody food. Now, the chi of bloody food is a very different story than the grain because the chi of flesh and body, bloody food also has different other attachments to it. We'll come to this later on when we talk about meat. If one is replacing the usual food with qi, so let's say uh, we don't eat 
the food, we don't eat our, our uh, usual grain, uh, but we eat the chi, we collect the chi and cultivate the chi, uh, this is much healthier. And people live from that. So I'm going to introduce a little practice you can try at home and or while you're listening to this webinar. So try this. The breath is held as long as possible during inhalation without escaping. So we inhale and don't let anything go out. And while holding it, take a large bite and imagining that the chi is swallowed like a gulp of water from the windpipe into the esophagus so that it enters the stomach like normal food. So sometimes because the stomach is empty, yeah, we feel hungry, are we starving? Or, you know, sometimes just because we see one advertisement in the TV, we want just to want to eat what they show us. And this is a mental hunger. So the body, like all things, is composed of chi, but it is made of heavy kind of chi, while the air is a light, supple, and very pure form of chi. If we, for example, have a scale from one to 10, and this is an energy scale, we are like putting different type of energy on there. Let's say the sunlight or the, the light is a type of energy. The chi is a very fine and very subtle energy on this scale, much lighter, much purer, much more subtle than light, than the light energy. Huh? Ordinary food supplies the body with the chi of the five tastes through digestion. This is heavy and impure chi. So if a Taoist practitioner wants to uh, balance the harmony or balance the yin yang, also get rid of the over or excessive emotions, one needs to understand that every type of food, they're all divided or uh, categorized in these five tastes, uh, the five elements, is very heavy and impure chi when it comes to the chi cultivation. We just said, okay, the chi we breeze or we inhale the chi we can cultivate is a very light supple pure form of chi while the food chi is very heavy now on the other hand the chi nourishment from the breath replaces the heavy matter in the body with light pure chi and when the transformation is complete the body is immortal so in classical text, it is said once we stop eating food, yeah, doing the fasting, beagle fasting, and so on, and we only nourish ourselves from the chi we breathe, yeah, we inhale and exhale, we are able to become immortal. Some version of grain abstinence can lead to health problems. It is reported. This very heavy diet is not without painful moments. So I tell you from my personal experience, the major problem is that we don't have supplements or anything we can use instead of grains. Most of the people, they like to be full when they eat. They like to eat shibao, yeah, eat full. So they feel like, oh, they, they earn it. They, have something in their stomach they can survive on. Sometimes, you know, uh, when you are uh, like eating a lot of food, uh, you feel like uh, feel like complete. And that's also a mental thing, uh, emotional thing. So people sometimes they cannot get rid of the most or the food, what they used since the childhood yeah, is grains, either if it's bread, if it's uh, rice, if it's uh, porridge or such things. Uh, we are always eat 
any type of grain for our food because that's in many countries the main food, the main food what people survive on. Uh, gives energy and so, so, so many things. But if we are looking at the chemical uh, parts or at whatever the grains do with our body, our grains are actually transforming into sugar and we are getting often uh, over uh, much of energy, which then uh, yeah, is stored as fat reserve. So if we are eating a lot of grains, yeah, we can also, if we don't burn up the energy, we can also gain a lot of weight. So some people, they feel they're missing something or it's an emotional uh, abstinence. Yeah? So also when some people, they are addicted, and this is the second and very you know, fundamental issue for the grand abstinence is if somebody is already so used to the food, they cannot live without it. It doesn't matter if they get healthy or uh, sick, they still eat that. It's nothing different than a drug addiction. I had a client uh, a couple of years ago, they want to uh, lose weight. So they have a health issue already and I recommend to leave out all the grains, no sugar, no coffee, no tea, no nothing. So basically uh, a very pure Taoist diet as I also use for cleaning and purifying myself when I uh, go into my practice or do ceremonies. Uh, it will turn the body to a pure, healthy, uh, full with chi, transform the complete body and also the mind and emotions. But this person, he could not let go of his daily morning porridge. So I cannot help people, they already make up their mind. I only can help people who are listening to my recommendations. So this is what I mean. Some people, they cannot change. Even it means... If they don't, if they continue to eat this, they're gonna die sooner, sooner than later. Now maybe some people are not afraid of dying. So when we are uh, when we are taking grains out of our food menu, means we need to supplement with something else, maybe with fresh food, salad, carrots, potatoes. And when, when I say, okay, we live a healthy diet without sugar, uh, there is a lot of food items we buy or we eat on a daily basis, they are full with sugar. Uh, and if you, if you want to purify your body, do the correct way of healthy uh, diet and fasting, uh, you can start also with leaving out all the sugar for at least three weeks to three months. Without grain and meat, those who practice it are malnourished. A lot of people, they say, ah, if you don't eat meat, if you don't eat grains, uh, you are not healthy. You don't get all the energy you need or all the nutrition you need. Uh, the Taoist authors go on to report that in the beginning, there were numerous problems. And this is a fact. People start this type of diet without proper preparation, without already act or practicing certain Qigong methods or meditation, or even slowly, slowly introduce Taoist diet. They will suffer from dizziness, weakness, drowniness, difficulties, the movement, even get diarrhea, constipation, and also emotional issues. Like I tell you from many, many of my clients or students, when they leave out sugar, I mean sugar in all types, means also grain, uh, fruit, chocolate, everything with, which contains sugar. Very, very few get over the period of three weeks. It is very hard 
also most most of the time it, it's hard because the emotions the emotion or the um, the sugar uh, controls our emotions uh, and is it let us attach to this very very yeah, unhealthy type of food sugar also brings a lot of problems to the body but this is also part of a general discussion about diet right but sugar uh, you know can do all, all type of sugar i would say the um, uh, also the transform sugar from grains it's also can bring a lot of problems but people they are used to it let's say okay you have a drug addict you take away his drugs and of course you're gonna feel dizzy you're gonna feel weak you're gonna feel difficulty in moving and have pain different uh, emotional states however they were persistent and insisted that after a few weeks, the symptoms would go away. And this is what I tell all my students, all my clients when they are doing this type of diet. It will go away after a few days, maybe maximum three weeks, you know, depending on how heavy uh, you know, your foot reformance is now the body would soon feel like it was before like before like a newborn and this is how we say okay uh, we are becoming like a newborn after we get rid of this issue the problem with the grains even better people are more calm and lighter they feel lightness they feel like more um, comfortable with the nature they also advise beginning the practice gradually and recommend a range of medications for the third to four, for the 30 to 40 day period of the transition and adjustment. So after 30 to 40 days, this is about three weeks, four weeks, maybe five weeks, the body will already be transformed. But until then, there is a lot of different types we can use. Uh, medication means uh, like healthy uh, food items or herbal items we can use for supporting the body and support with energy and nutrition. Uh, there's a lot of different types and um, I'm also using for fasting. I also use a specific uh, mixture for this type made of sesame and uh, different herbs, pongjin, for example. And for the Taoist fasting, it is important to know there is much more than just about the food. We if we are talking about bigu, we are talking about the three corpses and nine worlds. So bigu means abstinence or avoiding grain. So avoiding grain was the primary medicinal treatment for eliminating the sensual, the three corpses. We also sometimes refer to as the sun chong, the three worms. But in the major texts, we call it three corpses and nine worms. There's also different type of worms. They also um, called nine worms. Therefore, now we are referring as the three corpses, sun shi. Uh, and here's the sun shi, okay? They are different shapes and they have a very important meaning the three corpses and nine worms they are spirits that live in the human body and hasten death so they are spirits there are spirits and they live in every person supernatural beings that seek the decay of the body in order to feed on it so they are just like parasites if longevity is to be achieved, the three corpses must be starved. 
And the only way to do this is to avoid grain. This is why most of the Taoists practice Bigu. They want to starve the three corpses to death. They want to starve them so they can kill them. You cannot kill them just like this. You need to starve them. Traditional Chinese medicine associates the mythology, uh, mythological three corpses with the Jiu Chong. And the Jiu Chong is the nine worms. Here we can see the nine worms, which correspond to parasites such as round worms or tape worms, with symptoms causing a variety of weaknesses in the host's body. So like I said, the three corpses and nine worms, they are just like parasites. They're living inside the body and also bring a lot of problems. The three corpses enter the human body at birth and they are located in the upper, middle and lower dantian, the cinema fields, yeah? the lower dantian under the navel, the middle dantian at the heart level and the upper dantian in the third eye area. The brain, the heart and the abdomen, and they are in all these very important zones or areas. After the horse dies, they become ghosts and roam freely to steal offerings. And so in uh, ancient times, they are also believed to stay in the realm of the ghosts, in the realm of the spirit. These corpses seek to harm both their host and their fate. So if a person, a person has a fate, which is me, and a person can be affected by these three uh, corpses, san, uh, san shi. How they do this? Yeah, in a moment I will explain a little bit more about the Shogun Shen, but they are reporting us and also tell our sins. Uh, they first weaken the physical, physical energy in the centers of the Dantian. Then the second, as second, the three corpses are records of the horse misdeeds. So this is what I just, just said. The three corpses are recording or they are the record of the sins, of the misdeeds, and they are reported in the heaven. So they ascend to heaven every two months on the 57th day of the 60 day circle, which is called the Geng Shen Zhi. Geng Shen is a very specific combination um, of the two words Geng and Shen. And this is a double metal day. Uh, and they report to the Siming Director of Destinies. They state the misdeeds shorten the lifespan. Uh, so they are reporting our problems, our misdeeds, our sins, and therefore we are, are the, they shorten our lifespan. In the fourth century, Huang Qingjing, as a scripture of the yellow cord states, do not sleep day or night and you will become immortal. So this is why a lot of Taoists, this sentence, this quote tells us that's why a lot of Taoists on this day, Gangsheng Day, which is just recently a week or one and a half week ago, this, 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 this day is always repeat every 60 days. Yeah. Uh, on this day, Taoists do not sleep because sleeping let the sun chong ascend to heaven. So if we do not sleep, we basically uh, put them in a prison and they cannot leave in that day. So most of the Taoists also uh, practice Shogun Sheng, which is also a part of, or this is not sleeping, it's also part of the Shogun Sheng. Bigo 
is the abstinence of grain and grain products. Atrophies, the three corpses, and is the base for many Taoist dietary therapies, which can also exclude wine, meat, onion, and garlic, and so on. About the food items and meat, uh, we come to this in a later part of the presentation. But in the Jin Jian Yu Zi Jing, the classic of the gold char characters, it states, those who eat neither grain, nor wine, nor meat, nor plants of the five strong aromas with their food, must bathe, wash their clothes, and burn incense. So this Jin Jian Yu Zi Jing, this state or this quote is very, very important and very deep in the meaning. So if we want to become immortal, want to transform our body into an immortal body, we need to have this specific abstinence of grain, be good diet, don't drink wine, don't eat meat, no plants of the five strong aromas. We come to this later uh, with a list of food. Uh, part, uh, they are part of this list. Practicing bigo alone cannot get rid of the three corpses, but one does get to a point where they can be killed with the alchemical means, particularly with the cinema. So there is some methods during the ceremony or during the uh, fasting period with the bigu, where a person, a practitioner, start eating a talisman, for example, throwing the talisman with cinnabar ink and eating the paper. Also burn it and put the ashes into water and drink it. There's many different types, but this also refers to this. Yeah, we are bathing, we are cleaning ourselves from the outside, we wash the toe. What does it mean? You know, all the hui jian, all the attachment are gone. And then we burn incense for the worship. Bigu is a very deep practice with, the, with its roots in worship and also in the goal of immortality. So let's go and describe our three corpses in more detail. The Qingu, the old blue, dwells in Upper Dantian. It is he who makes people blind, deaf, or bald, and who makes teeth fall out and bad breath. Baigu. White maiden reside in the middle Dantian. She causes palpitations, asthma, and melancholy. Xue uh, Shi, the bloody corpus, dwells in the lower Dantian. It is through him that the intestine twists painfully, the bones dry up, and the skin cracks. The tides get rheumatism. So these are the three corpses, but they also have a different name. These three corpses are also uh, severely affect our emotions. The upper corpse sits in the upper dantian, is give us the sense or the emotion of material desire. And we are desire or we desire all type of material things. The middle corpse sits in the middle dantian. It gives us cravings for food. Uh, the lower corpse sits in the lower dantian and gives us the sexual desire. There are several types of desire. Uh, desire, there is different type of desire. And these Corpses or uh, and Jiu Chong, they make us like a parasite yeah, to do and act differently 
Um, yeah, this is just a, a like a modern type of parasite. We would say the same. And they control our emotions, they control our mind in a way or uh, parasites, only parasites could do. In the ninth century, the Chu San Shi Jiu Chong Bao Sheng Jing, scripture of the expelling of the three corpses and nine worms for the protection of life, described the three corpses, the upper corpse as the Peng Ju, live in the head. Uh, is the Peng Ju here? Peng Ju. And here is actually also his Hui Zi. Peng Ju live in the head. Symptoms include a feeling of heaviness in the head, blurred vision, numbness, excessive flow of tears and mucus. The second is Peng Zan. Peng Zan is the middle one. Peng Zan resides in the heart and stomach. It attacks the heart and leaves its host yearning for sensual pleasure. And the lower cause, Peng Jiao. Here, this one. Reside in the stomach and legs, it causes the ocean of Pyunma to run out and leaves its host lasting after woman or man. Uh, so it controls our sexual desire. So a very important note I add to this here. It is been scientifically proven that certain parasites in the human body feed on the components of grain and sugar. These parasites are even capable of altering the host's character and habits to suit the parasite's preferences. So I give one example, the parasites such as flukes or Toxoplasma gondii, Toxoplasma gondii, which is actually a parasite found in cats and small mammals, which creates a high level of risk taking in humans. So somebody who is taking risk in driving, you know, uh, don't care about uh, risky maneuvers or actions, and they might be infected with this parasite Toxoplasma gondii. And mice infected with this parasite will almost voluntarily feed themselves to the cat. So mouse, the mouse is infected with this parasite, it's just sitting there and waiting for the cat to eat this mouse. And they don't afraid, they don't have fear. So the parasite makes the mouse believe that there is no danger. And this is very, uh, very scientifically proven that these parasites, they have a lot of effects on the mental state or also on the character and the habits of how we act. So when a person wants to get rid of these corpses, we are practicing or cultivating what we call the Shogun Sheng. Shogun Sheng is a method or cultivation or practice done on the specific date of the Geng Sheng, the date I just already mentioned. The three corpses ascend to heaven every Geng Sheng day, approximately every two months on the 57th day of the 60 day circle to report the misdeeds of the host. So he, they are reporting on us our misdeeds or sins to prevent, to prevent the ascending and avoid the punishment by heaven, Taoists use several methods on this day. One we already talked about is the not sleeping. So Taoists, they stop sleeping on that day. They just you know, stay awake and practice or meditate. 
There are methods to get rid of these three corpses, which is a long process where several medicines and chemicals are used. Some other methods, they use what we call the danyao, a mixture of chemicals and herbs to kill these three corpses. Just to make sure we understand that the 60 day circle uh, is like the base of the Taoist calendar, or also very important for our Taoist practice. 60 hour, day, month, or year calendar is based on the specific order and repetition of the heavenly stems and earthly branches. So, heavenly stems here in yellow, earthly branches in blue, and here is also the animals, yeah, they are related to each other. So, for example, is the mouse, yeah, Chow is the, um, the ox. And when we look at the number 57, here is the Gang Shen Day. Gang Shen, here is double metal. Shen standing for the monkey. That's why I miss a little monkey. But to make you make sure you understand that in the 60 day uh, circle, there's only one combination which result in this Gang Shen. Uh, for example, when we hear, here's Gang Wu, here's Gang Chen, here's Gang Yin, and so on and so on. Only on the 57th day, the combination is Gang Shen. This is where they report they are sent to heaven in Portuguese. So, Tai Shang. The one we already mentioned shows several recipes to get rid of the three corpses. All include poisonous ingredients, and the smallest mistake when making the medicine will lead to the death of the practitioner when taking the medicine. That's why this type of practice is not so well known anymore, and it's more or less forbidden by law to give people poison. If they are not done by themselves, maybe you know, people could end up in prison or even worse. In the history of China, there were many kings wishing to become an immortal and died from trying these medicines. Other methods to avoid the ascending of the three corpses to heaven are talisman, meditation, and fasting practices. So we are if the Gangshan day is coming, maybe a couple of days before that, we already start fasting. We prepare with the talisman. Yeah? We uh, meditate. And during that day, we also stay up and meditate the whole night. These methods are done on the Gangshan day and all around these days. Like I said, we prepare with a fasting period before the Gangshan day, and then afterwards, uh, we can also continue fasting. Fasting includes the ingestion of different herbs and avoidance of several food. Uh, in a moment, here is listed below. In a moment, I'm going to tell you what foods we should avoid when we are doing the fasting. The talisman are used in combination with incantations and are a powerful tool for the practice. So if you know how to use talisman, you draw a specific symbol on a piece of paper and keep it, or you can also um, yeah, burn it. Or there's different types of talisman. So the next, so Lao Jing get rid of corpse and warm recipe. Use Guanzhong to kill Fu worms, Bai Chue Lu to kill Yo worms, Shu Lekker to kill white worms, Wu Yi to kill meat worms, Lei Wan to kill red worms, Silk worms to kill scorpion worms, Magnolia to kill lung worms, Lang Yazi to kill stomach worms, Stone silkworm kills dung beetles. Nine herbs are made into water pills and light powder soup. Five pills are taken daily 
the effect will be seen in 30 days and all disease will be cured in 60 days. So of course, I will not give you the complete recipe in Chinese because I will not uh, be responsible for you taking the action. But uh, if you want to learn more, you could also find the sources by yourself. So here is the prior mentioned the talisman, the Laojun six jia talisman. So here is six type of talisman, and you can also use this for preparing during the Gongsheng days. Take the 10 pieces every 10 days to remove three corpses and nine worms and to protect the essence of yang. Cinnabar, cinnabar ink is used for this talisman. Use talisman together with the ingredients above to get the best outcome. Uh, if you want to do the herbal mixture, you're welcome to find out. Uh, but the talisman will also have a great effect. So here the talisman are uh, called the Liu Jia Fu, Liu Jia Fu, and they have all the Jia Zi here as the base character. Liu Jia Fu. So as promised, now we are talking about the parts or ingredients we want to avoid during our Taoist diet and fasting. When cultivating the Tao, depending on the school of practice, there are often restrictions on the consumption of meat, fish, hot and pungent vegetables. Hot and pungent vegetables are also called the five severe or five pungent flavors. So the flavors, the very strong flavors. These arise from the abnormal chi of heaven and earth and are strong in taste. Its chi is unhealthy and its consumption can affect the organs. How can they affect the organs? So just an example, if I'm fasting and I do this over a period of time and clearing my organism, and then I will eat garlic, for example. I will have huge effects because now most of the people, they are just used to all these uh, food. So it is like, you know, they're already uh, used to the food and the effects are not so, uh, they, they cannot feel the effects so heavy. But once you get purified, clear your body, you eat these type of foods, they have a very big effect on the body. And also, on uh, the spiritual part. So let's list them. The first is garlic. Garlic affects the heart and excites the chi of fire. Excessive consums consumption affects the mind and one can become disorganized. The second one is onions, affect the kidneys and deplete the chi of water. Excessive consumption leads to mood swings and discomfort leads to the panic. Leaks affect the liver and overcomes the chi of the wood. If the fire prevails in the liver, it is easy to irritate and emotions are affected. So all this have different layers. Huh? The effect of the food have the effect on the chi and also effect on the organism and emotional state. Number four is spring onions affect the spleen and suppress the chi of earth. When the spleen and pancreas are irregular, feelings of anger and brooding building up. So the spring onions, they could affect us, uh, our emotions even with anger and you know, different times. Five is coriander or any herb which is such a heavy taste like coriander. Effect the lungs and hinders the chi of metal. So lungs, if you would, if you remember the list I show, the uh, element metal is the 
organs, it's the lungs, the immune organ, it's the lungs. So metal chi in the lungs is hindered and affected by this type of food. When the lungs are overworked and drained, one often falls into the pessimistic mental state. So this all have different effects on our body. The consumption of these types of food uh, after our fasting period should be avoided. And if we can, we leave out these foods completely from our diet. So when we are talking about Taoist diet, we say, okay, we eat su de, su, eating like uh, vegetarian. In English, it's vegetarian. But when we say su de, su de is not only not eating meat or animal food, but su also means not eating these five type of food, garlic, onion, leek, spring onion, and coriander. Uh, a Taoist diet, a Taoist vegetarian diet includes also to, uh, the avoidance of these five food items. Otherwise, it's not su. Somebody says su, I eat vegetarian, uh, but I still eat these according to the Taoist standards. This is not su. And uh, then we also can, if we eat this food, we can also eat meat because then it's not uh, vegetarian if we add these to our diet. So besides not eating meat, uh, these five food items here need to be avoided if we want to eat vegetarian according to the Tao standard. The taste of these foods are very strong and after consumption can trigger cravings in people. Uh, some of these food items, they now, because we are so used to all the consumption of these food items, but if we are doing the bigo, if we are doing the fasting period and we cleaning and purifying ourselves, the organ organism gets cleaned out basically. Uh, and we consume these kind of food items again, this will trigger a lot of different things in us. For example, the emotions, yeah, for example, the energy will be different. Yeah, it affects our energy and also different cravings. The excessive consumption can even be unhealthy for the body. Consumption of meat and fish can cause one to lose one's nature. It creates the sin through killing, and one falls back into the infinite circle of being born and striving. So now we come to the part where we talk about meat or eating meat or giving meat out, fish, meat. So consumption of meat can cause one to lose one's nature. So the nature of one of, of this being or of me, of you, is being part of the original one. So we are one with Tao. We are He Dao. And eating meat, if we not even kill this, but we eat that, it means we are also part of the process of killing. Yeah. So because we eat this, uh, we are in the part of, or in this process, within this process of killing the animal. Therefore, it brings us back to the infinite circle of being reborn and reborn. And Taoist practitioner understands the virtue of heaven and honors life. So why we not eat meat? is because we honor life. There's different type of schools. There is also different traditions. They have different taboos. For example, there is a taboo in the Jenny pine not to eat beef, not to eat cow. Why? Because the cow is eating grass all its life. It doesn't eat meat. It doesn't kill. It is a very soft and loving animal. It only eats grass. 
but it helps and works for the owner, for the for us all the life. And you know, it makes milk from grass, eating grass. That's why uh, some schools they don't eat the beef, the cow. And also the one of the reasons is because Lao Tzu also riding the ox in the past uh, is also need to understand this kind of tradition. Uh, when we are Taoist practitioner and we have entered a school, we also have to follow the rules and regulations with discipline and honesty. But some other schools, they don't eat other items. Yeah, in the Wudang Pai, for example, they don't eat snake or turtle meat, uh, dog meat, this kind of foods. They're mostly for, forbidden in those practice or those uh, traditions, those schools. Uh, as a whole practitioner, I, I know countless uh, Taoists, they are not living in the temple, but even living in the temple, you know, sometimes when you're out of the temple or people are sick, you know, there's, of course, different diets. It is not necessary to be a vegetarian if you're a Taoist, but to understand the rules or the, uh, the standards of every school is very important. You know, we need to respect our roots and our traditions. So encourage compassion. Don't kill. Avoid feelings of anger and the consequences of sins. So we don't want to kill. We don't want to kill any animal because we want to support life. We honor life. We do not kill even the fly. Yeah? While there is also differences between animals, they are bad for life. For example, there is animals or you know, like pests and they can also kill a lot of people when they are not avoided. You know, for example, rats, you know, a different type of uh, mosquito, they can also be very unhealthy for life. These are the reasons why not to eat meat. But again, there are those schools where eating meat is allowed or specific meats are taboo, just mentioned the different schools. The diet of a Taoist practicing internal alchemy is light, no strict taste, no strong taste should be, like pure and clear, purity and clarity, calmness of mind and harmony of qi, is what we want to achieve. Being free from disease is the result of a very healthy diet. It all comes naturally. Inner practitioners and several Taoist schools see onions, spring onions, garlic, leeks, and coriander as the five strong tastes. And we mentioned it before, we list them, and we need to avoid these five food items if we want to purify our body. Taoists do not necessarily have to be complete vegetarian. Ordinary believers like Su Jia Dizhe consume meat that they have bought in the market, but they are not allowed to kill the animal by themselves. So a Taoist does not kill the animal, as this prevents the association with the Tao. The Taoist diet also depends on the practitioner's individual circumstance and the school they belong to, like I said before. And there's what we call the three clean meats. One can consume the three clean meats. If he or she lives in a worldly life and can, it can often be difficult to eat only vegetarian, either because our life or our nutrition needs that, we are working hard or such things or disease or different other reasons. If one is sick and the body is weak, for example, eating revitalizing food is necessary to heal. It is important not to be dogmatic about nutrition. And this is what I need to uh, 
have you understand that we are not dogmatic about nutrition. I know a lot of dogs, they also eat meat outside of the temple. Even they will probably not publicly admit that. <laughs> Maybe, uh, you know, some are just, everybody's just normal and human. And uh, we are not very dogmatic about this. Nobody judges anyone. And if somebody says that you must be vegetarian, otherwise you're not a Taoist, you know, then they don't know what Taoists, what, what Taoists are. Because they never live with Taoists or, you know, do all the things in China like Taoists do, whatever. To being dogmatic about Thompson is not Tao. We need to be Xiaoyao, more free. And we need to follow our master's teachings. Uh, but we are not very dogmatic about all the standards. Of course, we want to achieve a goal. We want to achieve this specific Taoist skill. We need to follow the method. If we are interrupting the method, yeah, maybe we need to start all over again. Or we just you know, fail and we are unable to, con to continue. But if we consume meat, then a Taoist will refer to the three clean meats. The three clean meats is first, no bad thoughts about the butcher. The person who killed the animal is also only doing their job and we are not to judge them. The second is, do not slaughter the meat yourself. So we do not kill the animal by ourselves, And number three is not being there when the animal is slaughtered. So we are not part of this killing process. These are the three clean meats. The Taoist doctrine advises a vegetarian diet. However, it does not necessarily dictate this in daily practice. Again, it depends on your practice, the method you are cultivating, if it's necessary to stay a uh, vegetarian or, you know, some diets, they also need to include some herbals or some method they need you to eat a talisman every day or drink a specific talisman water or something like this. Different ways, different methods. Daily practices focus primarily on the cultivation and purification of the body and mind. And in the course of cultivation, one will also break away from meat and fish naturally. Uh, so if we, I'm cultivating, I very naturally stay away from meat and fish because all the time I don't eat so much. In the moment, I'm also, I'm also uh, doing a specific diet and also uh, fasting. And in the moment, I only eat a little portion of food every day. And then uh, I have a very good brother, Li Chengxia. He recently, we uh, both, you know, he is in China, uh, in Beijing. And um, we both basically have an eating habit. We don't like eating with others <laughs> most of the time. We don't like uh, eating a lot and uh, only eat one time a day because. And this is funny, but both of us, we think eating is a lot of waste of time. So I can do a lot of other things while uh, be, besides eating. So before we finish this course, um, we are going to learn our, also about the home form and to make it complete and more uh, understandable. What is the Hung Po? Hung Po are like the three heaven souls and the seven earth souls. The three heaven souls are the Tai Guang, the Shuang Liang, and the Yu Jing. Yeah? Tai Guang, Shuang Liang, Shuang Liang, and the Yu Jing. So Tai Guang dominates life. Yeah, it resides in the human body for a very long time. The person can look, feel refreshing and it prolongs life. So 
we often say, ah, oh, we have three souls or three, two souls in our heart. But according to the Taoist belief, we have three heavenly souls. They are more uh, a lofty type. They want to, they, uh, yeah, their goal is to uh, go towards heaven. And then we have the earthly souls, the seven earth souls, they will turn or tend to stay on earth or on this earthly realm. Shuangling come from yin energy belonging to the five element life soul dominate wealth, can restrict excess young energy. So they all have also their particular task they're supposed to do. But we need to understand that a balanced life will also have a balance of the souls. Yojin, the quiet spirit, yeah, the energy of yin, belonging to the earth and dominate the human faith. So easy to make people fall in last addiction, gambling, you know. So every day before going to sleep, we are knocking the teeth and call the three souls and repeat the name three times. So we can also daily enhance our energy and all the disease in the body can be drived away. Ghosts are afraid of these three heavenly souls. The seven earthly souls, the qi po, are the tun zai, shi go, tu hui, chou fei, qiao yin, fei du, fu shi. Yeah. They all have different purposes. Yeah. For example, tun zai, eliminating the harmful substance at night while you sleep. Yeah, should remain alert when sleeping. Yeah. Deal with body consciousness. They all have different type of purposes. Yeah. But the seven earthly souls, you see, even only the appearance, uh, they look a little weird, you know, they look a little bit of uh, ghost-like or, you know, monster-like here, like this only one leg, monster face. And old books or old scriptures, they are described in this way. Uh, but they're also part of us. In the Taoist philosophy or the way we look at life and people, everybody has different soul, different characteristics, just depending on what is triggering. Uh, ourselves, you know, if we are only with good uh, environment, only with good people, there's also good things coming out from us. But if we are in a bad environment, you know, all these kind of things they have uh, giving and taking. How about? Uh, this is another picture of the three heavenly souls and seven earthly souls. Just to look at it, it shows us uh, the opposite. They're also part of the whole. Uh, we cannot have only heavenly souls or only earthly souls. Um, they also represent different characteristics and have their different tasks. How about? So, Mantiba. The Taoist uh, diet and fasting QA. We can talk about questions now. Upcoming courses for our Taoist college is the next uh, master. The next course is Mastering Baza, the first module is starting on the 22nd July. And Yijing Divination, the first module start one week later on the 27th and 29th of July. 
And uh, both courses have a free introduction webinar. So if you're interested in looking into the Baze and Yijing practice of Taoism, you can also join the uh, free uh, introduction course and all the details how to sign up you'll find on our website Taoist College, DaoStudies.com. And also I would introduce, I would like everybody to join the Dao study group. It's open to join. And we have weekly classes with uh, changing topics. Very interesting. Most of the people learn a lot in this course. And everybody also can find all the information how to join this course in our website, Dao's College website. How about? Okay, everybody, that was a very great webinar and I hope you enjoyed the content and if you like to send me a message or if you want to reach out you will find our contact on the website welcome to join the courses and if you have any special inquiries just reach out and send us an email I'm Dois Liu from the Daoist College in Germany I wish you good night good day